Good afternoon. Um, oh, shit, uh, I was going to talk about three sets of, of examples, uh, working almost from the smaller scale up to the bigger scale. I'm going to talk about St. Giles Circus, Tottenham Court Road. Uh, Old Oak Common, some of you may not be surprised to hear me talk about that, and also then ending with Euston, so they're coming out with some quite big challenges. Um, now, this map is quite fascinating. We could spend the next quarter of an hour talking about it. Uh, the, red, the, the line going through there is the Roman Road, arguably the first road sort of, um, through um, London. Um, there's an interesting piece of research I came across the other day from the European Community to say, which, which had pointed out that actually um, there was clear uh, evidence economically of, of how Roman infrastructure had driven, uh, had driven e e economic growth. So there's, there's quite a lot about, you know, about transport infrastructure drives our growth in, in our um, uh, cities. Uh, and clearly I'm going to talk about one of the uh, intersections, um, uh, I think it's uh, there, of um, the two major roads in, in London. There's quite a lot to see on, on, on this map. Uh, I'll, I'll talk at the very end about Euston and the disconnectivity that the railway lines uh, have created there. I'll talk about issues such as concentration versus uh, dispersal and so on. I'll try to bring out some, some lessons uh, in what we've, we've learned over the years. So on to Tottenham Court Road. Uh, we did a study about five years ago now, which was um, brought about by uh, Design for London. And they'd realised that there was a disconnect, I and mean, this is one of the things that I'll talk about, a bit of silo thinking going on at Tottenham Court Road. Two boroughs, Westminster and Camden. You had uh, TfL very, and, and their designers very ably, uh, ably designing a system below the road. Um, for um, Crossrail, and you had various different agencies not really quite connecting up. And we, we came on board to look at the public realm, what happens when this big investment in underground expensive infrastructure can, can, comes to ground. And the first thing we, we did was to make the observation that actually everybody had underestimated what happens when you put all these things together. If you look at what Crossrail was going to do, if you look what the tube growth was going to do, and if you look what the local planning policy was going to do in terms of intensification, you got to the point where you suddenly realised that Tottenham Court Road, at that corner, was going to be as busy as Heathrow, and as busy as, 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 as Oxford Circus is, is now, in a very much smaller space. So one of the first lessons is we should join up. Now, many of the things I'm talking about this afternoon are not easy. I'm going to leave you with some questions. They're not easy things to do, but we've got to be as joined up as we possibly can and cut across the disciplines, cut across themes, so we can take a kind of whole view of, of the issues that, that, that we get. So 68 million people a year using Tom Court Road. Now, uh, again, this is one of the things that Crossrail are not employed to do. We then had a look at um, Oxford Street, and the west part of Oxford Street is very different to the eastern part of Oxford Street. It's the medieval sort of crossing. Um, and what, what you've got there, very small properties, which drive something else, but also the pavement widths are much smaller. You've got lots of listed buildings, you've got pinch points there, you can see that here, here 2.6, 4.2. So we, we were really quite concerned about the, in particular the area you can see at the bottom right, where the escalators from the main, arguably the, the main entry and exit to, to the new um, station there. And remember what it deals with, it deals with Northern, Central, Crossrail 1, and probably Crossrail 2, uh, what would happen there. And so you can also see some other pinch points going on here. And we, we came into the process quite late, and one of the, our crowning glories here, and it doesn't sound very much, is, is, is to get a bit of reality and a bit of um, external thinking into the um, uh, transport engineers' view of life. We managed to get that set of escalators off to the left, to the west, moved back, moved um, uh, south by about a metre. It, it's very difficult station design, the lift can only be in one place. But we were really concerned that in the real world, the, the runoff from there was going to be that the people coming off the top of those escalators, stopping and wondering where they are, uh, was going to be a real problem for Oxford Street. So we made, managed to make that, make that a, a wee bit better. And I think everybody suddenly realised that if you dump 68 million people into that space every year, you may have some problems. So then there's a whole question about concentration versus uh, d d dispersal. I get annoyed uh, every time I see a scheme that, that pushes the, the bus stops away, and the most recent one I've seen is at Old Street, where the buses stop and move some distance away from the kind of tube station. 
And I can kind of see why that is um, in terms of traffic flow and, and the whole thing. But I have to say that here, our, our advice was that we should disperse as much as possible because of the tightness of the interchange, the tightness of how people would move, move around. So we were saying push the layover spaces away, push the, the, the bus stops away from the immediate crossing there of the, of the green arrows. Uh, and, and that's also re re reflected by the kind of second diagram there, that we should move those interchanges away from the centre, d d d disperse. And one thing we try to, um, is a common theme of ours, is that also maybe we should um, in invent, uh, discover, reveal, connect up a, a, a one street back network. So the, the issue about concentration versus dis dispersal. Then there are other less, less obvious things, which again aren't in anybody's particular remit. We, we suddenly realise that unlike um, uh, the, the tube distance, that, that actually I see from one of Robin's um, slides, that um, from Tottenham Court Circus, Covent Garden is 12 minutes away by tube. Now, I hadn't realised in my own mental map of London how close Covent Garden is, if you go to the south east of, of the, these uh, drawings, how close Covent Garden is to Tottenham Court Road. So one of our uh, urban design principles here is what was to uh, think about how we could better link up these spaces. Again, it's not easy. The most obvious route is through a churchyard. There may be a listed building to play with there. But you know, certainly things to think about. And actually, they begin to impact on the transport case. Because could we take pressure off Covent Garden uh, by doing something at Tottenham Court Road? So issues like that, more subtle issues than, than might be considered by, by the transport engineers. And then putting it, it, it all together uh, as one master plan, um, aspirational, the picture on the box, many kind of projects which I won't go through now, just thinking about how you can create that, that one street back, where the missing links are, hoping to inform planning policy, thinking about where the layover spaces are, the whole system of pedestrians, cyclists, uh, buses, taxis, um, and, 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 and so on. And we can begin to see um, that the fruits of all that beginning to come out in, in the area now. So if we change um, gear now, um, the next lesson then is that we've got lots of transport investment going on in the country, a lot, a lot of it affecting central London. But it's often funded and becomes certain in, 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 a, in a sequential way. The, the map to the left is the accessibility given by Crossrail, in particular at Alder Common, which I'll talk about next. Added to that, we had high-speed rail. Now, um, in, in terms of lessons, the, 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 this, isn't, this isn't my quote here, but, but I think this is another example of um, sequential thinking, but not really working itself out. Big investment in high-speed one, a station built at, at Ebbsfleet, the initial service pattern didn't really call there, lovely big car park isn't used, no connection to the, uh, the, the station next to it, no place, no, no local connectivity, things are, I'll, I'll come back to. Now, um, probably being rude putting that next to this slide, but uh, here's all in common. Now, what's happened here is, is that, um, and hopefully you're all familiar with this, that, that, that if you can see the cursor, um. the, the lines to the, the, the right are those going in, into Paddington, with a cross rail and express station, station, station there. Moving left, you've got the high speed station. Moving left beyond that, you've got the cross rail maintenance depot and 38 stadium tracks just to house the, the, the cross rail trains. At the time that the planning of cross rail was, was, was done, it was perfectly sensible to put the depot and the stadium there. Perfectly sensible. Maybe that was done, say, 10, 15 years ago. We, we now, now know that even to relieve Paddington, it would be very uh, ideal to have a cross rail station on, on the, the, the Great Western mainline stations. And then what happened, sequentially later, and we still don't have uh, approval of HS2, um, there's been the idea of putting the, uh, an HS2 station through there, I mean, quite a small space. So all of a sudden, we've got, I mean, we did the vision shown on, on the bottom right in 2010, all of a sudden it's not railway lands, it's not backlands all, all of a sudden, it, it's, the, it's what I've called in the past the Canary Wharf of the West. I don't really know how we can cope with, with, with these issues, but I do know that they give us problems. And you've seen some of the, um, uh, that Terry Farrell has gone to the press uh, 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 about this. We've all got this problem of the fact that we're building a train depot and, and, some, and some sidings in the middle of what might be some of the most valuable land in West London. And 
none of us know in reality uh, how to get out of it because it's a difficult problem. So how do we deal with that? Important place for London, as you can see by the figure at the bottom. Um, connectivity then, These are some, this is some work we've done um, at Old Oak Common. The, the, the big white gap in the centre is effectively the Crossrail Station and, and the, the Crossrail Depot and, and, and the stabling. Uh, we planned out um, 40 at Old Oak, the overground station, the, to the top of Old Oak Common Lane and also off at Hythe Road. Again, quite difficult stuff, you know, the, 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 the one the, uh, connecting from the high-speed station to Old Oak Common Lane is about the same as the front of King's Cross to the back of St Pancras. Is that a good day-to-day -day, uh, interchange? don't know. We, we could probably do, design it to be so. Mostly outside. The one to Hythe Road is actually uh, getting towards the kilometre, but it's hugely important in getting people off the um, high-speed trains and out of Euston Station. And, and these are all bits of the big challenges about how you can make that um, interchange uh, and how you can make that, that walking distance uh, attractive and usable for, for uh, everybody. They're both certainly, they're kind of probably paid and un 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 unpaid, paid sort of type things. You'll probably be going out into the open air because they're, they're, they're so long. So it's a big problem is about how you deal with movement um, uh, with these, these big new projects. Um, there's then how we should be thinking about these uh, centres. If we can, and again I don't know quite how you do this, we should have the economic vision first, we should perhaps have been thinking about what should we have done with the Old Oak Common before we chose to put a crossrail bit over there. There's issues then of proximity, this is why people will, 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 will locate here and while they they'll want to work and, um, and live there. Issues about local connectivity I've just looked at on, on the last slide. And then how you make a sense of, of place. Um, the images off to the right are, are uh, car giants, um, car giant scheme, I think by PLP Architects, looking at how you could make a place around a elevated station. And then the images to the, to the bottom right is uh, the Old Oak um, and Park Royal uh, Development Corporation looking at how Wilson Junction could be in the future. Huge amounts of, of transport investment needed to make the, the, the places. How do you do them, and how do you get from here to there? How do you have a, a sense of place at every stage? Now, moving on, and then back into the planned terminus of HS2 in, in the centre of London, uh, Euston. Um, the image on the left is talking about the fact that our stations came into the periphery of London. In the end, by um, de decree, they're linked now by, by the circle line, and they're becoming what I call places of, of, of um, exchange. They're becoming, our stations are becoming town centres in, in their own right, as we can see at King's Cross, where more and more people are, are going there not to travel. But the, but the, the final thing for me is, is what place should Newton, Newton become? What do we want Newton to be? And we should be thinking about that before we start planning the transport, for reasons you'll see in, in, in a second. Um, experience from elsewhere, Lyon on the, on the left, you've got to have a plan, you've got to have an economic plan before you build all, 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 this, all this transport. At Lyon they didn't, it was almost a disaster. Lyon is not a success story from day one, it's a, it's a success story from day 17. Um, make it a destination, at Liège it's uh, through I iconic design, I don't think you need to have iconic design to have a destination, but sometimes in a new place it helps. Antwerp is a, is a key example of making a station permeable. It's got, I think, 54 entrances. And you know, I, I kind of, I've been involved recently with a master plan in York where they have 100 he uh, hectares just close to the rail station. They've got three ways into it. It's not going to work. Um, there are some other issues. This, this is a quote from a senior network rail um, uh, director. They've got a problem. London's growing, more and more people coming through the stations. Liverpool Street has only just been fixed, really, in, in rail terms in, 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 in that length of time. You know, what can we do there? How can we d disperse the people moving through there? We're at, at Euston, should we in fact be joining Euston Square to Euston Station? You know, big, big issues. Um, you've also then got this issue about the disconnectivity I was talking about before. Um, you've got the Euston Road at the south, the original bypass to the um, congestion in the centre of town. Uh, you have the um, canals at the top, uh, disconnecting those areas from uh, other people, and they got cut up into quarters and, or uh, areas by the railway lines. 
And what's tended to happen is that over time you've got um, a case of, of deprivation. But I think that um, if that were one council borough, it would be the poorest single council borough in Western Europe. So that, that's one thing. And, and I'm coming on to kind of who the audience and who should we be listening to for what Euston should, should be. So for me, we have to decide what Euston is going to do for London. Is it a place where people live and continue to live as they, as they do now? How do we make a place? How do we move from now to then, you know, a place of every stage? Uh, and how, how should we make an uh, interchange there? And in particular, some of you may know, there's a real issue about uh, connectivity across the Euston railway lines. Um, and, and if you think about it, there are very few chances of getting across the, the lines going into to Euston. And one more slide. Um, this is a drawing that we did for Lord Adonis for the, the original command paper for HS2. It just kind of summarises the argument. We think there should be development above the station. We think it should be a public place. We think it should link across the station to um, uh, increase connectivity between the places e either side of it. It should link to, to a King's Cross. But the key thing is how we integrate that station in, 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 into the public realm. So the people who are walking from Evershop Street on the east over to, um, I think it's Melton Street on, on, on the west. What audiences do we listen to? How do we make a place? Thank you.